So, welcome back. We have been discussing first order logic, we have defined the language, we have defined some rules of inference. Now, let us talk about meanings essentially or interpretations as we say. Just like we said in proportional logic that you know there are interpretations which are models and there are interpretations which are not models, we want to arrive at a similar notion here essentially. The only complication with uh, first order logic or an extra complication with first order logic is that we are now talking about domains essentially. So, we are saying you give me a language, but to interpret that sentences you have to give me a domain as well. So, let us look at that process. In proportional, log log in proportional uh, logic we said you give me a language or you give me a knowledge base and you give me a valuation and then I will be able to interpret it essentially. Now, we are saying that you give us a domain and then we will see whether you know um, there are models is what we would look for essentially. So, in proportional logic an interpretation was just a valuation we said p is equal to true, q is equal to false, r is equal to true and so on and so forth and that was an interpretation that for certain choice of those values your knowledge base would become true then we would say that that is a model and for others it may not be true. In first order logic we have to say now you give me a domain also. So, an interpretation and we will use this uh, we will use this i like symbol here to distinguish from this mapping i which is also an interpretation it is an interpretation mapping. So, an interpretation of a knowledge base or a set of sentences is a domain and a mapping from the constituents of the language to the domain essentially. It, so, it, you need a domain or a universe of discourse as we have said and a mapping from the language to the domain D. So, let us see how to construct this uh, uh, interpretation. Each of the elements of the sets, the set of relation symbols or predicate symbols, the set of function symbols and the set of constant symbols are interpreted over D. Each of them is understood to get meaning from the domain D essentially. So, if you are if you give me a domain then I will say okay, what does this predicate mean or what does this function mean essentially or what is this C referring to. Predicate symbols will be mapped to relations on D. For example, the brother relation or friend relation or greater than relation anything which kind of says that a certain relationship exists between two members of the domain. So, 5 is greater than 7 is not true. So, 7 is greater than 5 is true. So, this kind of which pairs will go into that relation. Function symbols are mapped onto functions onto D as it was expected and constant symbols are mapped onto individuals onto D. So, that is the first thing. You, you take a language L of P of C, you choose a domain and then you define an interpretation mapping I which will tell you what does this predicate map to, what does the function map to and what does the individual map to. So, for every predicate symbol Q which belongs to the set of predicates symbols of arity n, we say we call the image of q as some q i, q superscript i, where q superscript i is the image of q and what is q superscript i? In the domain, it is a subset of d cross d cross d and d is in the line because it is a nary uh, arity and every relation is a subset of that essentially. So, for example, uh, 
I might say that uh, uh, Harry and Tim that pair belongs to the brother relation. So, this brother relation is a subset of this d cross d cross d. So, only those individuals which are brothers will belong to this subset essentially. So, that I hope you are familiar with the notion of relations, formal relations. Likewise, every function symbol f in f of arity n we talk about the image of the function symbol which is we will call f i, f superscript i and this f superscript i is basically a function which goes from d cross d cross d n times to this d is actually. So, it is a mapping from a set of uh, individuals to one individual in the domain. For every constant symbol c, we have an image of c which is c prime or c superscript i and it has a property that it must belong to the domain essentially that it is an element of the domain essentially. So, constants are elements of the domain functions are functions on the domain which map to elements and relation predicates are relations on the domain which which belong to this that set remember that the relation is a subset of d cross d n times. So, that is the interpretation function and in addition we have an assignment function which we will call as a which will take every element from the set of variables and map it to domain. So, we are saying that okay, if I have 3 variables x, y, z and maybe say some okay, x is 17, y is 21, z is 13. So, this is an assignment essentially. So, once you give an assignment then you can of course, say what we are talking about. So, we will use the term the, the image of the variable under the assignment a as v superscript a and it must be an element of the domain. Okay. So, now how do we think of terms or how do we interpret terms? So, we have a language in which there are terms and we have a domain. Terms denote elements in the domain. We have been saying that informally, now we are saying it a little bit formally. We are saying that the terms from the set of terms T are mapped to elements of D as follows. If T is a variable, then the term under the interpretation and the assignment is basically only the term under the assignment because a variable is not influenced by the interpretation mapping that we are talking about. We just need to assign a value to that and that is done by the assignment function. In a similar fashion, if it is a constant, then the constant will depend upon the interpretation mapping i. So, that is why a constant will map onto t superscript i, which says that mapping is telling us that you know this constant Aristotle maps to that particular individual in my domain essentially, whose name happens to be Aristotle. And likewise, uh, if we have a term which is constructed using a function symbol and n terms as an argument. Uh, so, if, if there are this thing, then the interpretation of that term will be the interpretation of the function symbol by the in mapping because only the mapping tells you what the function symbol is whether it is plus or whether it is mother or whether it whatever the case may be depends on the arity of course. And the arguments are of course, interpreted using both interpretation and mapping because terms can have variables, terms can have constants, anything can be possible, terms can have other function symbols inside. So, it is a kind of a recursive definition. 
variables are mapped by the assignment A. So, for example, we can say x is mapped to 12. Constants are interpreted by the mapping I. So, for example, I might have a constant called cipher in my language which is talking about numbers and I might map that in the mapping I. So, there is a difference between assignment and, and interpretation. Interpretation is fixed when you say give me this language and give me this domain and I you have an interpretation. Assignment is something that you do in some sense on the fly essentially. Function symbols denote elements too. So, for example, if we have plus 3, 8, then it will map to the number 11 if you are talking of uh, number systems. So, predicates map to remember predicates map to relations on the domain we have already said that functions map to functions on the domain. So, in this formula that I have written here this knowledge base that I have written here there are only uh, predicate symbols and there are only constant symbols there are no variables and there are no quantifiers and uh, there are no function symbols. Okay. So, we have this formula notice of course, that I have purposely chosen names which are not meaningful normally we like to give meaningful names, uh, but this is just to understand this notion of in interpretation in a little bit more detail. So, in this knowledge base which is given here in the gray box O is a binary predicate symbol that is why you can see that this is a predicate symbol in the Chaniak and McDermott notation and these are the arguments to that. In our mathematical notation I would have written it as O A comma B. M is a unary predicate symbol. So, again I would have written as M A if I was using mathematical notation and if I am using this not then I would have written this not here essentially. And A, B, C are constant symbols. Uh, so, they talk about some named individuals in the domain essentially. So, the question I want to raise is what is this knowledge base describing? How do you figure out what it is talking about? See, when we said man, Socrates, because in our English language the term man stands for humans in general and Socrates we know is the name of a person we knew how to in interpret that essentially. But that is only because we are we use those names which are meaningful to us essentially. So, if we say brother x y we know that you know we the relation that we have in mind is the brother relationship and that we know what that is. But logic does not work with meaning we have been saying that repeatedly logic is devoid of meaning it is devoid of truth values it is just a language which defines a set uh, the, called the knowledge base or the set of sentences and it has rules of inference which operate on the knowledge base and it produces new formulas and you know that is the process that is called theorem proving essentially. Logic does not define look at meaning at all. So, it does not care what does O stand for, what does B stand for, what does M stand for. The only thing it knows is that O is a two place predicate symbol or a binary predicate symbol, uh, M is a unary predicate symbol, A, B, C are constants and not is a unary predicate essentially. So, it knows that. But beyond that does it represent anything for us? It really depends upon us essentially. So, I have said this before also meaning lies in the mind of the beholder not mind of the beholder. This, so, this I will correct that. So, let us look at two interpretations. The reason I am doing this exercise is 
to show that logic is totally devoid of meaning that if you are doing logical reasoning if you are doing theorem proving you are not looking at the content at all you are only looking at the form essentially this particular knowledge base i will use uh, a little bit later but to do some re to answer a query that uh, we would be interested in but we'll come to that later for the moment we just want to see or illustrate that this knowledge base could mean different things depending on the domain and the interpretation that you have chosen interpretation and mapping you have chosen so it's a little bit like saying that if i use the symbol x plus y what does plus mean essentially of course we are so used to thinking of natural numbers or integers and things like that so we know that plus stands for addition essentially but what if i was talking about strings essentially then could plus mean something like concatenation indeed that's possible essentially what does it mean to say that x greater than y it's a predicate the first one is of is is a function the second one is a predicate so this set, this statement has to be true so let's say you know we have some quantifiers or or let's say these are constants so c greater than d essentially what does it mean when is it true when is it not true it depends on the domain of course it depends on what do you mean by this symbol which i am calling as greater than uh so if i am talking about strings it could mean longer than that's the string c which is a constant is longer than the string d essentially if i am talking of numbers it could be greater than in the standard sense of the word numbers so what this means depends on the interpretation what this means depends on the interpretation so with this different interpretations you would have different meaning and of course maybe different truth values also essentially so let's look at two interpretations for this knowledge base and see that it could stand for two very different things uh, once you decide what does o stand for what does m stand for and what do a b and c stand for essentially so what is the knowledge base we are saying o a b and then we are saying o b c then we are saying uh, not m a and we are saying mc so there are four atomic sentences not atomic three of them are atomic one of them has this negation uh, which is the thing so we have four sentences in this uh, language what do these sentences mean is what we want to look at and we want to realize and understand that they could mean different things based on your choice of the domain and your choice of the mapping function okay so here is one interpretation the knowledge base is written on the top that i hope by now you have remembered that here i am saying that i am talking about the blocks world domain essentially you know when you talk about planning and the algorithms we often talk about the blocks world domain and in which the let's say the predicate o stands for the symbol on m stands for the property or ca category maroon and abc are just names of three blocks essentially so what is this uh, knowledge base saying it is saying this four sentences and what do they mean when you say a is on b that's what we typically mean that block a is sitting on block b b is on c block b is sitting on block c we said a is not maroon and c is maroon the fact that we are talking about this blocks world comes from the domain that we have chosen here which tells you what is the mapping of the predicate symbols and what is the mapping of the constant symbols we don't have function symbols here but if we had function symbols it will tell us that as well essentially 
So, in this new domain uh, which is the domain of people, uh, this is what our predicate symbols mean O stands for looking at essentially. So, when I say O A B I mean that A is looking at B essentially. What is A? What is B? I have said A is Archie, B is Betty and C is Cuthbert essentially. So, O A B says Archie is looking at Betty essentially, O B C says Betty is looking at Cuthbert essentially, M says married. So, this is how the domain is that we are talking about. We have three individuals, Betty is looking at Cuthbert that is the second statement in our knowledge base. Archie is looking at Betty that is the first statement in our knowledge base. Archie is not married and Cuthbert is married. So, what we are doing now is to show that interpretations tell define what you are looking at essentially. And for the same knowledge base, you could have different interpretations. That means, you could be talking about totally different things. Essentially. This particular knowledge base is interesting. We will come back to that later, because uh, I read this puzzle somewhere. I think maybe on the Guardian uh, website or somewhere. Uh, and the puzzle was that given this knowledge base that uh, Betty is looking at Cuthbert, Archie is looking at Betty. Uh, Cuthbert is married, Archie is not married. Is it true that an unmarried person is looking at a married person? Hmm? Let me repeat that. Think about this question and see whether you come to an answer to this. Can you find out whether this statement is true that an unmarried person is looking at a married person? We will come back to this later. And before that, we will do a little bit of logical reasoning with uh, first order logic, but we will do that when we come back uh, in the next video. Just think about this meanwhile. Right.